Good evening everyone, time for another Bitcoin report. You are looking at the live market data for the Bitcoin. We're still trading at 15, 15 bid by 1508 ask. That's a pretty tight spread for that thin of a market. You can see up above that there are a lot of currencies listed. I don't know if these are all active, but the potential is there for the Bitcoin to trade in all of these currencies. That's a fantastic thing, revolutionary, and I just can't get over how revolutionary this idea is, and it's how huge this is going to be moving forward. So the Bitcoin has survived. You can see at a price of 15, the Bitcoin has survived so many attacks I can't even list the attacks that have occurred between now and about seven days ago including an entire press demonization banning and restriction of its mention in some forums the banning of it on eBay the attack by various shills and of course the hacking of Mt. Gox but again the Bitcoin price is standing strong it's about 50 percent of its all-time high and it hasn't really retraced much at all so here's one market this is fairly illiquid at Trade Hill but it's up and coming and it's doing all the right things there's another market that is coming online and that's Bitcoin 7 a little bit different than Trade Hill and Mt. Gox but kind of interesting because you get a visual into the last 20 offers and the last 20 well they they call them both offers but one's a bid one's an ask so we're bid at about we're asking about 1511 and bid about 1474 so let's refresh that and see if anything's updated so now we're falling. We're at 1470 by 1465. That's that's a pretty tight spread. So that's very encouraging. So overall, I think the Mt. Gox incident is going to be overall a positive for the Bitcoin simply because it pushed, it gave a strong push for competitors to come online and get their exchanges up and running and get a lot of competing exchanges going for the Bitcoin to trade in. Now, ultimately I believe that you're going to see arbitrage opportunities between these exchanges. Obviously at this point they're not liquid enough, so if we do a refresh on Trade Hill, we can see that they're still 15 by 1507, while Bitcoin 7 is 1470 by 1465 so you can see obviously it would be once the volumes are there someone could easily arb these markets they could just go in and buy the Bitcoin at 1470 on this exchange and turn around and sell it at 15 on that exchange so obviously the arbs are going to come in at some point but We'll wait until Mt. Gox comes back on the line so we can see where they set the price at and how that impacts these other markets. It's going to be interesting and I guess the word is that within five hours or so uh, Gox should be back up and online so I'm going to be watching that to see where they start trading. But I want to jump over to the topic of the night and it's a very important topic. It has to do with the history first of all of the Iron Curtain and for those of you who don't know the Iron Curtain was a physical boundary that came into existence after World War II and it separated Europe into two separate areas. Now the Soviets were the ones that were behind this and the reason why is that during the 1950s there was a beginning of a, a fairly large migration. I'll, I'll read a little bit here. 
The migration from east to west of the Iron Curtain, except under limited circumstances, was effectively halted after 1950. Before 1950, over 15 million people emigrated from Soviet-occupied Eastern European countries to the west in the five years immediately following World War II. However, restrictions implemented during the Cold War stopped most east-west migration. Now, of course, these people were fleeing the tyrannical, totalitarian Soviet system, which, as we know, ultimately bankrupted itself because it was a state-directed, anti-free market, hopeless system that ultimately ran the Soviet economy into complete bankruptcy. But it was marked by the Berlin Wall, which was a physical wall erected between East and West, and specifically between Eastern and Western Germany. The Berlin Wall was very constructed by the German Democratic Republic, East Germany, started on the 13th of August, 1961, to completely cut off West Berlin from the surrounding East German and East Berlin. The barrier included guard towers, placed along concrete walls, which circumscribed a wide area known as the Death Strip. So, most of you know that history was a history of the people trapped in that totalitarian system. After Soviet occupation of Eastern Europe at the end of World War II, the majority of those living in newly acquired areas of the Eastern Bloc aspired to independence and wanted the Soviets to leave. Taking advantage of the zonal border between occupied zones in Germany, the number of GDR citizens moving to West Germany totaled, and it gives the totals. One reason for the sharp increase was the fear of potential further Sovietization given the increasingly paranoid acts of Joseph Stalin. 226,000 had fled in just the first six months of 1953. So, you can see that people tend to vote with their feet, especially when they see a totalitarian system taking hold. Now, if you remember in the pre-World War II Nazi Germany, a number of the Jews escaped because they saw what was coming for them, and wisely so. They escaped to America and other free countries, and a lot of them took their gold, they took them in their teeth, they took they took their gold any way they could carry it to get out and start a new life in a free society. So I want to look at real quick the concept of capital controls. Capital controls are restrictions that are made that prohibit the sending of money outside of a nation. They're usually used by either totalitarian or bankrupt nations and a nation's government can use these to regulate the flows into and out of the country's capital account. These include exchange controls. Now, exchange controls, these are imposed by a government on the purchase or sale of foreign currencies by residents or on the purchase or sale of local currencies by non-residents. Common foreign exchange controls include banning the use of foreign currency within the country, banning locals from possessing foreign currency, restricting currency exchange to government-approved exchangers, fixed exchange rates, and restricting the amount of currency that may be imported or exported. So why am I going over all this? Well, the main point is this, that traditionally totalitarian governments or governments that are verging on totalitarianism start to institute these types of things currency controls exchange controls capital controls to prevent those who see what's coming from fleeing the country now how does this relate to Bitcoin this is how the Bitcoin has no borders the Bitcoin is a currency that exists in all of these nations. So those who hold bitcoins and I will cover in some later commentaries about how 
you can move your bitcoins and there's many ways in fact you don't really need to move them your bitcoin wallet doesn't take up that much space and there are a lot of places you can put your bitcoin wallet especially if you encrypt it and use zimmerman's privacy and that's again why i consider that a revolutionary idea along with the gutenberg press as i covered in volume 10 but if you encrypt your wallet and place it and you can make any, as many copies as you want you can put it anywhere on the internet and it's worthless to anyone but you as long as you know the encrypted password so what if one of these countries becomes a totalitarian nation and you have to flee no longer do you have to do what the Jews did and hide your gold in your teeth or swallow a balloon or try to get through some kind of horrific homeland security checkpoint you just simply exchange your goods for bitcoins and you upload your bitcoins somewhere only you know where you flee the totalitarian nation you come into the new nation you establish residence and you download your bitcoins and you exchange your bitcoins and you've effectively moved jurisdictions using bitcoins so this is a tremendously revolutionary idea it is another value of bitcoin and it's another reason why the bitcoin is an idea whose time has come and the bitcoin will be one of the biggest blows to the new world order and totalitarian governments that has ever come down in history and I'm just so excited about the Bitcoin because it's an idea and if the Bitcoin fails other Bitcoins will happen if Mt. Gox fails other markets will happen and it's an idea and they can't stop it and it is a thing that will cause the borders of the nations of the world to dissolve in a way that has not existed up until this time and it is a mechanism of freedom whereby people who believe in freedom will be able to flee jurisdictions of totalitarianism and flee to jurisdictions of freedom that welcome the Bitcoin and we'll talk to you next time